Hello everyone, today we are going to solve problem 46 of chapter 18. The 8 to 12 kilogram slender rod is attached to a spring. So whenever we are talking about slender rod, the term slender means the length to thickness is very high. So the moment of inertia does not depend on the thickness. So the equation that we have for moment of inertia like for this rod, if you write it about the center of gravity, it would be 1 over 12. The mass and the length. You can see the length would be the only geometry that is in this equation. And if you write it about point A, if you use parallel axis theorem, you would see that would be 1 third ml squared which has an honest stretch length of two meter. If you look at the problem, we can see based on that definition, this one is stretched. This is higher than two meter. If the rod is released from theta 30 degrees, so if the angle, the initial angle is 30 degrees, determine the angular velocity of the rod, the instant the spring becomes honest stretched. Uh, so first we have to find what that angle is when the spring becomes on a stretch. But looking at the problem, we see we want, we have the initial angular velocity, we want the final angular velocity between two instants and these instants are position instants, so there is no time involved. So we can use work and energy or conservation of energy. And we can see that we do not have any non-conservative forces so it's better to use conservation of energy. We have conservation of energy for this problem. So conservation of energy equation is initial kinetic energy plus initial potential energy, final kinetic energy, final potential energy. So we have both types of potential energy here, both the gravitational as well as elastic potential energy. Uh, so, for the first instant, we are saying that it is released from rest. We like that because that means that there is no kinetic energy involved. But the fine, we have a final kinetic energy because we want to find omega. Omega 2 or the final omega is, is unknown. We have two types of potential energy. Well, the initial case would be the gravitational as well as the elastic or spring, I write it by S. And same thing for, for the final phase. So let me write indices here. If you look at the geometry here, Whenever we are talking about gravitational potential energy, we have to look at the center of gravity, seeing the, how much center of gravity is moving up or down. And for this problem, it's easier to set our coordinate system here, saying this is our coordinate system, X and Y. I want to know what would be the potential energy, the change of potential energy with respect to that. I have a potential energy here, and that will change when the spring becomes on a stretch. But we need to find the final angle. If the initial angle is 30 degrees, what would be the angle when the spring becomes on a stretch or the length would be two meter? I mean, we can use uh, geometry equations, but this, there is a better way to do it. If you look at the problem, you see this length is two meter and this length is two meter. And we are looking for an instance that springs becomes two meter. So we have a triangle with all the edges two meter. So that means that in, in that final case, this is our fixed plane, this is our rod, and this is our spring. If all of them have the same length, so the angles are 60 degrees, all the angles are equal. So we are dealing with the equilateral uh, triangle. So we have the initial angle 30 degrees and we have the final angle 60 degrees. So I will start with the gravitational potential energy. 
mgy, m is 12, g is 9.81 in SI unit, and uh, would be one sine 30, which gives me negative 56.86 Newton meter. So why the length is two, the total length, but I'm only interested in the gravitational, in the center of gravity, so that would be half of that. So let me draw it here. And that's true for uh, both uh, cases. Here I will do for 60, but also true for uh, the other case as well. This distance is one. If I want to find y, that would be one time sine of this angle. That's the first case would be here. This would be our y one sine of 30 for the second case, y2 would be one sine of 60. And for both cases would be negative value because how I selected my coordinate system here in that the fixed point. Same thing for the second. Potential energy is mgy, let's call this y1 and y2. Oh, I forgot a negative sign here. And negative 12, 9.81. One is the length, is half of broad, then sine of 60. It gives me negative 101.95. And that's the unit of energy. So I'm done with gravitational potential energy. I'm gonna find elastic potential energy. So that would be half K delta S or the displacement square. To find the displacement, I need to go back to the geometry again. I have this distance, which is two. I have this distance again, and I wanna find here. I can use the cosine rule to find the length, the stretched length or L2. So the cosine rule is telling me if I have a triangle, A, B, and I have the angle C, and the length C, I can find the third edge of the triangle using the cosine rule. A squared plus B squared minus two, A, B, cosine of the angle in between. And that's what we are gonna do to find L2 of the spring. I mean, L2 would refer to a stretch, not the second position. So we have two plus two, the other edge is two minus two of each edge, a sign of the angle in between. So here, if you go again, <coughs> If this angle is 30 degrees and the whole thing 180, so this would be 150. One fifty degrees. I will find L2. The stretch length 3.86 meter. And I know on a stretch length is two meter. So I can find delta S. I can find how much my spring is stretched. So L2 minus L1 will give me 1.86 meter. So now I can find the potential energy for my spring. So V1S half Spring constant is 40, 1.86 square. So here the distance is in meter, the spring stiffness is in uh, Newton meter, 
Uh, so we don't need to do any conversion, but more often than not, you would see that the spring constant is given in kilonewton and the distance is given in millimeter. So you need to be careful about the unit and what unit you are carrying. Uh, so we are done with the potential energy. The, potent, the final potential energy V2S would be zero because that's when it becomes unstretched. So we have to find the kinetic energy. And kinetic energy, we have the option of writing about center of gravity or about the fixed point. So it's easier to write about the fixed point, A omega squared. We can find I, but the only unknown that we have would be omega. So if I write this, we said that the moment of inertia about one edge of uh, a slender bar would be one third of M L squared omega squared. If you do the simplification, you would see that that would be eight omega squared. So now we'll write my conservation of energy. I did not have any initial one, so I had only potential. I have two uh, uh, potential uh, energy, both gravitational and spring. For the gravitational was negative, I was negative 58.86. The elastic was positive. Kinetic energy is eight omega squared. And for the final case, I do not have any elastic. I only have uh, my gravitational. So the only unknown is omega would be 3.75 radian per second. So if we go back to the problem and review the problem, you would see that for the initial case, we did not have any kinetic energy. We had two types of potential energy. For the final case, we had kinetic energy and we only had one type of potential energy. The spring was on a stretch. Uh, probably the trick of this problem is the geometry to find theta or to find uh, this length. The rest is a typical conservation of energy problem. 